Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, North Flat Images, and a short video about an aspect of printer maintenance that many people either don't think of, or if they do think of it, they're a bit worried about it, so they don't do it, and that is updating your printer firmware. Now, this printer here that I've got for an example, um, I checked it before doing some, uh, some recordings. I wanted to make sure I'd got the most up-to-date firmware for it, and I went onto Epson's site to check that. Now, modern printers will often communicate over the internet and can let you know when there's new firmware available, but this one I checked manually and I have downloaded a package from um, Epson site. It'll be available on Epson sites all round. Um, same goes for Canon, by the way. Um, the, the firmware itself is the internal software that makes the printer work. Now, over the course of years after a printer comes out, there are lots of developments of firmware. And unfortunately, um, they don't, they're not fully documented quite often as to what the benefits are, which has led to a bit of suspicion as to what people are up to. But anyway, I've got this particular bit of software here. Um, I've got it running on this Mac here. I've just loaded up, it's the same on a PC. And um, I fired it up and all I need to do is just run it. There's the usual uh, software license agreement. Uh, suggestions for being careful basically if you think you're going to get a power cut sometime imminently don't try and update the firmware uh, switching a printer off in the middle of a firmware update goes for cameras as well it can lead to unpredictable and undesirable results i.e it completely messes up your printer uh, these, these things can be fixed but that's often a service fix so basically read what it says on the instructions for doing it. This is quite a simple one here. Now I'll just go to next on that. Uh, it tells you the uh, what we've got here. It will hunt around on the network and it has discovered the actual printer. Now that's fine and I can use that particular one there. Uh, it's found, there we go, we've got that. It's detected this printer and I'll just go for start. With all of these things, you get lots of warnings as to whether you should go ahead. Yes. Enter the administrator password. There isn't one. I double checked there. There was an administrator password on it. Um, it was password. Um, I'm not in, I cannot remember why there is a password set on this particular printer. Um, but that if it's password, it suggests it was something I did. Uh, the one I would have followed after that would have been one, two, three, four. As we see, the update has happened and the printer's making it. It'll switch itself off and restart itself. Now, whilst it's doing that, a little bit more on what do firmware updates do? Now, this is capping station from this particular printer. Uh, it developed a fault and this is the old unit that was replaced. This is one reason why I would say for a printer like this, one of these big printers, take out an extended warranty. Um, this being replaced and all the work to do it would have cost a significant fraction of a new printer if I'd not got it. And this happened after a few years. Now, this particular device, the capping station, so this is the bit where the head rests. It's also got the bit that does the nozzle checks and all the kind of things. You see the pipes where excess ink comes out. It is an absolute miracle of cogs, gears, mechanics, motor, all kinds of stuff. Uh, this is what impresses me about uh, inkjet printers these days. This is an impressive bit of kit. However, what's it got to do with firmware? I was chatting to the engineer who installed the new one of these after um, a fault with the printer. Um, I've got an article that covers some of this in far more detail that explains what this stuff, I'll put it in the notes to the video, a link to it if you're curious about it. Um, but I just kept this because it's just an impressive bit of kit and it's not covered in ink and so it's, it's quite clean. Um, but the firmware is what controls all the actions of this. 
It turned out at least one of the firmware updates, not long after the printer was released, and this was a few years ago, actually specifically addressed operation of this device. Um, and it's things like that that help make the printer work that get addressed in firmware updates. Now, I know some people are a bit suspicious and think that it's uh, Epson or Canon trying to pull a fast one on them, stop them using uh, third-party ink cartridges and stuff. Well, that's neither here nor there from my point of view. I would only use actual proper ink uh, Epson cartridges on this, Canon cartridges on a Canon printer, so that bit doesn't bother me. In normal use of the printer, here it's starting up again now, in normal use of the printer, if you see a firmware update, install it. Um, it covers all kinds of aspects. It can cover paper feed, it can cover the, the head height, all kinds of aspects of how the printer works. It shouldn't ever make enough of a, different for you to, a difference for you to need to reprofile or do anything to the printer. But there you have it. Um, this thing is now starting up again. Um, I would say if you find that your printer needs a firmware update or it says, says there is one, install it. Uh, if you have a particular paranoid nature um, and you see it, Give yourself a reminder to check back in three or four weeks and install it. I know people, some people say, oh yeah, but there's nothing wrong with the printer. I'm not going to install a firmware update. Yeah, you carry on doing that if that makes you happy. If you're, if you're bothered about it, I, whenever I see a firmware update for a printer, I'll automatically update it. Um, just what thing I do in testing printers. Anyway, I hope that's of use because I know a lot of people are concerned about firmware updates. Uh, same goes for cameras, as I say. So uh, if you've got any questions about printers, I'm going to be doing quite a few more articles and uh, review information about this particular printer uh, coming up. It's a really nice printer. It's one that I like using, particularly for black and white prints. And um, as you see, it is huge, which is why it took quite a lot of effort to actually get it in here. Yeah. But uh, thanks for that. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you find it useful. And I say, please just ask questions. I really do appreciate it. Thanks.